Okay, I've flipped this over. Um, everything's tacked. It's square. I've double checked. I've got it tacked on the outside corner and the inside corner. Um, same with the back side. And I want to flip it upside down because now we're at the point where we're going to be putting on our cross members. They're going to be just like this where they, where they go right on top. But before we get there, it's time to start worrying about our axle. So a good rule of thumb, generically speaking, is the trailer frame. This is the trailer frame. We're not counting hitch or anything. You want 60% of the trailer frame to be in front of the axle, or 40% to be behind the axle. So <clears throat> we've got 96 inches. 60% of that is 57.6. I'm going 58. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling my tape from the exact outside front and I'm putting a mark at 58. That's going to be my center of axle. That's what I'm going to use. Um, it, that'll be good. If you have the axle more in the center, uh, if, you, if you don't have enough tongue weight, this thing is going to be all over the road. It's going to fishtail on you. So I've always been of the opinion that you're better off having some weight on your truck, you know, have more tongue weight than you are not. And how my application that I'm going to use is I'm basically going to center my big welder. It's a 1,500 pound industrial Miller welder. Um, I'm going to be centering that right over the axle. And then I'll be able to have room for tools and torches up front, plus the hitch weight. Um, I, I'll have plenty of tongue weight. You don't want too much, otherwise it's all on your suspension, but I'll have plenty. So, in this application for a 5x8 trailer, I'm going 58 inches to center of axle. And I'm going to put the axle together, and then we're going to start worrying about hanger brackets. All right, I'm going to start putting the axle together. Um, I'm at the point now where I am going to install the wheel bearings and uh, the seal. We're going to put it on. I just want to show you a couple things. Um, you'll see that this is not an exact circle here. You've got a flat spot, and I've got a flat spot on my uh, spindle. So this is the washer. And then obviously your castle nut, and that's what's going to hold the, the hub on. So let's get to it here. And there's no good way to, I haven't figured out a way to do this without getting grease everywhere. So get yourself some rags, get them handy. All right. All right, now I have two different sizes here. Now I already packed these, but I'll show you how to, how to pack them. I've got the larger one. And it's self-explanatory uh, for the back side of the hub that goes against uh, the spindle face is going to be the larger one and then the smaller one is going to be here. So um, pretty much what you want to do to pack them is get yourself a handful of grease and you basically just want to work it. You, you just want to just keep packing grease in until it's coming out of every little orifice or hole. There's just no other, I don't know, there, there's bearing packers and stuff, but doing it by hand, I, see, I, I've used them, I actually used them on this, and I think I ended up doing most of it by hand anyway. Just make sure it's good and greased up, because you don't want to be replacing these. So, what we're going to do, there's no way around this, for me to get grease all over the place is I'm going to install this and the tapered side goes down. You can see it's pretty self-explanatory when you do it. So I'm going to install that. Now I'm going to try and get rid of some of this grease. Bear with me. I know if you, if you know what you're doing, you're going to want to fast forward this part. I just I don't want to leave anybody out. So, And this is fairly important. Uh, to make sure you get enough grease on everything. That way you don't have to replace wheel bearings ever. These things should last almost forever. Okay, I've got the bearing installed. I'm 
You get a little bit of grease off of this lip here. And basically the seal is just a little rubber. And uh, I'm going to put that in so that the flat side is out. And we're going to install that. I'm going to have to cut for a second while I get a hammer. We're basically going to flush that up. Get it so it's nice and flush on top. And we're going to s Actually, before I do that, I want to put some more grease in. I want to grease this up, the spindle, real good. There's just no way around it, guys. And I want to make sure I get some inside here. Grease everywhere. The more grease, the better. Trust me. So now, one-handed, I'm going to try and install this. Okay, and that just seats, it just goes right up until it can't push it on any farther. And that seal keeps the dirt and stuff out of the back side. So, I'm going to want to pack my small bearing, which I'm doing. Grease, grease, grease. Looks like I've got plenty. Now that one's going to be installed, and you'll see that's what holds that on. Push that on the rest of the way. We got our wheel bearing going here. We want to make sure that gets in nice. We're greased up pretty well. Now my castle nut. Now what you want to do with this is we're going to go, I'm going to use this wrench and we're going to tighten this up. But we don't, I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'm just going to keep going until she starts kicking. Now this, you can see that that's just a hair too tight. So now I'm going to want to back this off just until that hole. For our cotter pin. There's the hole right there. Okay. Flatten that out. There's our hole. Double check that. That's it, it feels pretty good. Now if this was real loose, you'd want to tighten it up one, but I'd say we're feeling real good. Next step here is I'm going to bend my counter pin.
dust cap. You want that dust cap on. And that's just going to tap on with a hammer. You don't want to dent it all up. Do the other side. That's all there is to it. 